Hello you guys, welcome you all to the detailed analysis of the FIDE candidates 2024. And this brilliant game happened in the round 10 between Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura vs Grandmaster Abbas of Nejat. So let's dive into the depth of the analysis and I hope you will learn something from this video. Hikaru opens the game with e4 as he was doing in all the rounds in the candidates and Abbasa replied with e5. Now very standard knight to f3 fighting for the d4 scar and here in the candidates you have seen knight to c6, bishop to c4 or 5 Royal pays an Italian system but this time Abbasa played knight to f6 which is a pattern of defense. Now here there are many ways to play the pattern of defense here. You can play knight to c3 which is a 3 knights attack. You can play d3 here which is a Leonardo's variation but Nakamura chooses knight takes e5 which is a classical variation. So very standard d6 knight goes back to f3 and knight takes e4. Here again there are many ways to play this variation. You can play queen to e2 which is a Kuzio attack. You can play d4 which comes in the classical attack but Nakamura chooses d3 which is a French attack. Knight goes back to f6 and Hikaru bishop belongs on d3 so Hikaru plays d4. And Abosov also plays d5 so he wants to play bishop to d6 in the near future. So Naka plays bishop to d3 and black plays c5. White continues with c3 so solidifying the structure and also making room for the bishop as c4 is about to be played. So c4 and bishop goes to c2 and now bishop to d6 so both of the bishops are looking good. So white castles and black also castles. So after 10 moves black is claiming a little more space on the queen side and white bishops are looking good on the king side. Hikaru continues with h3 so preventing bishop to g4 and black develops his knight on c6. White pins the knight with bishop to g5 so h6 and bishop goes to h4. Here black can't do anything on the king's side so he expands with b5. Hikaru continues with rook to e1 and now a5. Now believe it or not Hikaru plays the most trickiest move in this position which is a very natural knight to e5. Let me explain why this is so tricky. Now you can't take the knight as it will just ruin your position and also this knight is attacked. Now you can defend it with bishop to d7 or bishop to b7 or rook to h6. Bishop to d7 and b7 loses terribly. If black plays bishop to d7 he's losing after bishop takes f6. Now you can't take with the queen as your bishop is hanging so you have to play g takes f6 and now knight takes knight. And you can't take the knight because if you take it white has queen to g4 check, king to h8 and queen to f5 and you are just getting checkmated. Similarly if you defense with bishop to b7 you will lose after knight to g4 and if you play bishop to e7 just rook takes e7 after queen takes just knight takes f6 and you can't take the knight because if you takes it again queen to g4 check king to h8 and queen to f5 and you're just getting checkmated. But Abbasu plays the accurate defense which is rook to a6 so white continues with knight to d2. Black continues with bishop to c7 so making room for the rook to join the king side attack and white continues with queen to f3. And now knight to e7 so preparing knight to g6. White challenges the black queen side pawn with b3 and black plays a4. We have takes takes and now knight to f1. Black continued with a3 so if he moves the rook this pawn will not be attacked and white plays rook a to b1 and black plays rook to e6. Hikaru continues with knight to g4 so after takes takes now Hikaru can play g5 in the near future if position allows. Black plays queen to e8 so unpinning and also aligning it on the e file and white plays bishop to g3 and black plays bishop to a5 so pressuring the c3 pawn and white just trades the rook and plays rook to b7. Here black plays knight to c8 which is actually a mistake because of g5. Now you can't take it because of queen to h5. Black can't play g6 because this will just lose the game immediately. If black plays f5 this is also losing after brilliant rook 6 g7 also king takes you have bishop to e5 check. And if you move back you have takes and you are just getting checkmated. Hikaru misses the ID and plays bishop to f4, queen to c6 by black and white plays rook to b8. 
Black plays knight to e7, so offering the trade, and white declines it. And black plays queen to d7, so attacking g4, and white just pushes the pawn. But black plays bishop to g4, queen to g3, and now he solidifies the bishop with h5. Position look nice for black. White continues with queen to e3. Black plays knight to g6, and bishop goes to h2. Black plays rook to e8, so attacking the queen, and queen goes to d2, so saving the pawn on c3. But rook to e3, and before moving the queen, he first plays rook to b8, check, king to s7, and now queen to c1. So white is saving the pawn with the tactic and here black should play bishop to c7 and he will be very fine but he plunders with queen to e7 and now your rook is gone. Because of a move bishop to e5 and now you can't prevent knight to g3 and you just plunder in exchange. Because f6 just loses the game terribly so here black plays queen to e6 but knight to g3 anyway and rook takes e5 and pawn takes. Even though black wins 2 pawns for an exchange but it was never enough. White offers the queen and black accepts it and then they trade the d pawn and this position is pretty winning for white. After queen trade, black tried to complicate the game but this game was too out of the hand as white just wins the a pawn and after this he just started just pushing the a pawn. He start to play f4 and try to be tricky but this was just never enough and after f3 bishop to g4 checking to g2 f4 and bishop to f5 nothing was enough for him so after this position he just resigned the game and a brilliant victory for Hikaru Nakamura and a heartbreaking moment for Abasov. So see you all in the next video and doing the analysis of the games.